Hi guys, it's Jordan from PMP Campers. I'm just going to do a handover video now on this Eldis D'Artagnan. Um, so it is a it's essentially an Eldis 115, 2018 uh, Peugeot Boxer chassis. On the left hand side, you've always got your uh, consumable bits. So you've got the um, washer fluid, brake fluid, engine coolant, uh, actually power steering fluid, sorry, not brake fluid, engine coolant. This is your brake fluid just here. Um, your engine oil goes in just here and you have a dipstick for that just down here towards the front. Uh, if you want to jump start the vehicle, you've got a positive terminal for it just here underneath this little cover and then an earthing point or a negative terminal just here. The weight plate for it is just here. So you've got three, 300. So that's under your three and a half ton limit. Uh, so yeah, that's under the bonnet, nice and easy. Air filter sits underneath or well, inside this little box just here as well. That's about it really. So onto the near side, passenger side, we've got the bonnet release handle just here inside the passenger door. Your jack and wheel brace kit sits underneath the passenger seat as well. And then we've got your uh, diesel filling point and the add blue in there as well. So the sort of decals on here are all in absolutely lovely condition, as you can probably see. So the next bit we get to is your gas locker down here. So the gas locker itself is big enough for two six kilo propane bottles, if you did want two. Uh, at the moment, there's just the one, and you've got 2021 on your date for the pigtail. So you've got till 26 to replace that. Turning the bottle on, we go anti-clockwise around to the left. And turning it off, we go clockwise around to the right. And that's it, nice and easy. Down underneath here as well, we've got wastewater drain off point just there, which is always the grey one, and the fresh water drain is on the other side, and it's always your blue one, just down here. So we've got a door retainer at the top just here, which holds the door nice and snug like that. And your awning light up there as well, which you can turn on and off from the control panel. External gas point. So there's your barbecue point there uh, underneath the awning, as you would expect. These two vents just here are to do with your fridge. So if you've got the fridge lit up on gas, you can feel the warm air coming out through these just here. These are winter covers as well, so you can take these little front winter covers off. Fresh water filling point from there. So that's to fill up your fresh water tank, the water that comes through the taps. Toilet cassette locker. This is a Thetford toilet cassette. So to remove it, you lift up on the little orange handle there and pull towards us. The entire thing will then come out. Empty this out from here and then whilst you're emptying it out you should hold down the little orange button just here at the back and your blue fluid goes back inside here once it's empty so on the off side as i say you've got your down your uh, fresh water drain off point down here towards the back um, towards the front we've got a couple of important bits so external uh, water points it's like a shower point basically just here and we've got your ledger battery in this locker just here so this is the ledger battery here um, hookup point and an external socket there as well so basically the idea is with these lockers is that you would put the hookup cable in run it down this little channel here and then you can still completely close the locker with the hookup plugged in so uh, what I'll do is I'll just show you into the cab briefly. There's not loads to run through in the cab, but I will just show you around it. Right, so being on the Peugeot chassis, you do tend to get a few extra bits and pieces. So you've got the steering wheel functionality. You've got the cruise control there underneath the indicator stalk. Six-speed manual gearbox, 
air conditioning from the switch just there in the middle and you've got your little stereo double din size stereo there as well reversing camera comes on via this screen just up here um, and you've got a couple of 12 volt sockets down there but that's about it really so if I go around to the habitation door again So, first things first, as soon as we get in, uh, you'll notice that the control panel is just up here as soon as we jump in. So, Eldest branded, um, these are super easy to use, um, very reliable in my experience. Um, so you've got a main a master switch just down here. So once you've turned that on, that basically just gives the entire vehicle its 12 volt power when it needs it. Everything else after that is kind of specific things. So we've got lights, awning, pump, and tank heater. So awning is basically just that light that I showed you on the outside, your awning light. So you can turn that off for now. Lights, as you can imagine, it's just your lights inside the vehicle. So your overhead lights, any lights under here. That's what you need to have that switch on for. Pump, as you can imagine, is your water pump. So now that we've got that switched on, we will then have water coming through the tap. Very important to make sure that you've got good pressure coming through hot and cold. Once you've done that, you can then be sure that your water heater is full of water, basically. I'll go through that in more detail in a minute, but um, that's really important to do. Uh, tank heater, so if you're away somewhere and it's going to get seriously cold and you don't want your fresh tank to freeze, you have got access to a tank heater in here. So, um, the last one that we need to show you, so at the top just here, the little gauge that you can see, it is already on something up there, all right, and that's showing us the battery voltage in whichever battery we've selected. So we're going to obviously we're selected on the uh, the leisure battery as you expect. So you can see that the leisure battery is just there between 12 and 13 volts, which is absolutely perfect. Now if I press this button just here that says water, it's going to show us the bottom gauge and that's going to show us the water level. So we've got a full tank of fresh water. And there you go. That's how you check the fresh water level and the battery voltages. Easy as that. So, as I was saying, um, with the water, it is really important that you make sure that the boiler is full of water before you start trying to use it. Um, there is a big book pack in here. Uh, not in here, sorry. Up here, I think. One of these two, yep. So in all of this paperwork, there's absolutely loads of it, there is a book pack to explain to you exactly how these boilers work. I'm going to run you through it with the control panel, um, but in the future... If you do need any other sort of guidance with it, obviously we're at the end of the phone, but there is a load of paperwork in there to really explain in detail about the boiler. So, the boiler itself, if you try and light it up uh, to, to get the water hot and you haven't checked to make sure that the boiler is actually full, then you can sometimes run into issues like overheating and things like that. So it is really important to do what I showed you just then, which is literally pull the tap on cold and then hot, and as long as you get decent pressure coming through this tap, then you're absolutely fine. You can just forget that and then carry on using it as you want to. All right. Um, I'll show you how the boiler works in just a minute when we get round to it. Uh, but that is the pump and the sort of, you know, making sure we're pressurized sort of thing. So up here above, we've got the microwave. Now this is a 240 volt appliance. So this will only work when the hookup is plugged in. Up here as well, um, that's just the plug for the, the microwave there. And that's about it, just a load of storage. Right, so your uh, cooker system up here. So these are kind of integrated together uh, in the sense that they've got this little switch just here, does the ignition for all three of these gas burners. It also does the ignition for the grill and the oven. So that switch there does all of this. Um, You've got an electric ring on there, which will only work when the hookup's plugged in as well. So that's this one over here at the back. All the rest of them 
as I said, you do need these igniter switch on just here, but you literally just got dials on the left to light these up, just like any household gas cooker. Underneath, we've got the grill and the oven in there, which if I'm honest, doesn't actually look like it's been used, but uh, there you go. Underneath, we've got a couple of your gas valves. So um, if I just run you through which one is which, so these are your gas isolators, basically. So at the top, we've got the um, the oven and grill. In the middle, we've got the two the three burners at the top. And at the bottom, we've got the fridge. Nothing else in there to point out. So the idea behind those gas isolators, just so that you know, is basically, um, if you think that you've got a specific issue, like uh, think you've got a gas leak in a, a particular appliance or something like that, then you can isolate them specifically and individually from down there. Uh, so you don't have to turn those off every time you get out of the vehicle, but if you wanted to isolate something specifically, you would go down there. The fridge. Um, so this is a Dometic three-way fridge. And as you can probably imagine, it works three different ways. Uh, at the moment, I have got it on gas. So you can see it's on gas because we've got our little selector here on the left facing the gas symbol. So um, the gas is the more complex way of using the, the, the fridge, but it's also the best and most efficient way of using the fridge. Um, so when you're using the gas, you've got this little gauge over here on the left hand side, which basically tells you when the gas flame is on. So it's a tiny little mechanical gauge, basically, uh, that as soon as there's gas, you know, there's a flame on the actual uh, receiver bit at the back there, the thermocouple, this will then go up into the green. So if I switch this off from gas and the flame goes out, the little orange handle goes right the way down into the white again. All right, so the three different ways that you can use the fridge. You've got the off at the top. We've got 240 volt, which is your hookup. We've got 12 volt, which is for when your engine's running and then gas. All right, so at the moment, I don't have the engine running. I don't have the hookup plugged in, but I do have the gas on. So that is the only way that I can use the fridge. If I was hooked up on the mains, I would be here on 240 volt, and that would basically just start cooling the fridge down via the, 12, the, the 240 volt, the hookup. If I had pre-cooled the fridge via either gas or mains, I can then switch down to 12 volt, and that'll basically just take some power from the engine and keep it cool from that. But for the time being, the only way I can use it is gas. So what I'm gonna do is I've turned it down to gas here. I'm now gonna push in on the gas valve whilst pushing in on this electro electronic ignition, and then we're gonna watch the gauge. So it's lit now because it's going up into the green. Just going to hold on to these for a few seconds longer. And that's it. So as long as you see this little gauge go up into the green and it stays there when you let go of it, that's all you have to do. It's lit. All right, so I'm going to leave that on just for a minute just so I don't have to really cool down. Um, but that is how you use the fridge. Nice and easy. So just here is where um, elders are assuming that you're going to have a TV. Um, and the reason for that is that you've got your 12 volt socket and TV aerial point and a couple of two, uh, 240 volt sockets there as well. So um, if you have a proper motorhome TV, they normally work on either 12 volt or mains. So you can have it either plugged into here if you're not hooked up on the mains or you can have it plugged into here if you are. You've also got a couple of USB sockets here as well. So it's a nice modern vehicle. It's got all the modern bits and pieces like that. So up here, we've got your actual TV aerial itself, which is this part here, and the TV aerial booster, which is there. So you've got a little switch at the bottom just there, as you can see, which basically turns the booster on and boosts the signal down to that socket. So we've got this cable here that comes from the actual antenna itself runs through here and up into the booster, and then the black one here that comes down and feeds the socket down there. 
All right, so that is the TV aerial system. Switch that off when you're not using it as well. Otherwise you will find over a certain period of time, it will start to drain that out. Absolutely loads of storage in this vehicle. Bearing in mind, it's quite a small van, um, under six meters. It is absolutely amazing for its storage. It is just everywhere. Um, lots of natural light as well, I have noticed. So you've got this massive great skylight above us here, um, which comes open as easy as this. So you push this little button in and then pull the handle towards us. That then opens completely up. It is very windy today, so I'm not gonna open that. Um, but there you go. Right, so I've shown you the all these bits here at the front. Uh, so next thing is gonna be the boiler. So you've got a whale boiler, um, a whale system in here. So the whale system is kind of like two in one in a way. It all works from this one control panel doing your heating and your hot water. So um, at the moment, it's quite a warm day, so I didn't wanna have the heating on. But uh, if I just run you through how you use it, it's really, really simple. So what I'm gonna do first, I'm gonna turn the water heater off as well, so that we're some, sort of starting from fresh. Um, so essentially what we've got is we've got two sides to this. So you've got the top one here that says water heating and the bottom one here that says just heating. So if I want the water heater to be on, so if I've, if I've checked that we've got water coming through the hot side of the tap over there, like I was saying earlier, I can then come over to this top one and click through here and select what energy I want the boiler to use. So if I want the boiler to be on gas only, I would select this little symbol just here and then leave it alone. That's it. That's all you have to do. So as I say, at the moment, I haven't got the hookup plugged in, uh, but I do have the gas on. So that is the only way that I can actually use the water heating at the moment anyway. So I've chosen gas and now that's going to just do its thing and heat the water up from inside the boiler. And after about half an hour or so, you're going to have hot water coming through the taps. So all the time that's on, you will have a little symbol next door to it saying that it's on via the gas. If I had the electric hookup plugged in, I could use it on gas and electric, or gas and a little bit more electric, basically is what that is. All right, so I can use them at, you know, both at the same time, or if I want to, we can use electric only, one or two. All right, so if I wanted to use it on electric only, that's when we have to use these little squiggly lines um, and that'll just basically take power from the hookup. Sorry, it's got a little bit dim there. So hopefully that makes sense. As I say, at the moment, I can only use it on the flame symbol there, the gas, because I've only got the gas on. So that's how you use the water heater. I'm gonna switch that off now because I've already had it on for a little bit anyway. The heating is slightly different where you've got this little bit here, which is going up and down. That's basically just how much heating you want. If you really want to get it going, you can turn it right the way up. If you're not in such a hurry, you can leave it a little bit lower. But the heating itself works in a very similar way where you have to choose one of the settings to use it on. So at the moment, again, I can only use the gas, so I'm going to select the gas symbol there and then leave it alone. After a few seconds or so, we'll hear the heater kick in, the fan will kick in first, but then the flame will light up and then the fan will kick in again. All right, so that's how these heater systems work. Turn it up a little bit because it's quite warm in here and then it should turn on. So you can probably hear it now. So that is how you use the heater. Very similar to how you use the water heating, apart from the fact that you have to use this little scale here as well, just to tell it how quickly, uh, or you know, how much heating you need. All right, so other than that, um, I was told by the engineer that did this particular hab check uh, that these systems have various kind of, um, if there's ever an issue with them, you'll get a little ex exclamation mark flashing next to which one there's a problem with. So for example, if there was an issue with the water heater, you would have exclamation marks flashing next to that. Um, they flash in a certain sequence and in the paperwork for the vehicle that I showed you up there is where it will tell you what those fault codes mean. Um, so, if, you know, fingers crossed you won't ever get that issue, but if you do, you know where to look for, you know, fault finding basically. Uh, again, 
always go back to us if you do have any problems with it or any issues that you need sorting but all the paperwork for it for the troubleshooting is in the vehicle so i'll flick back through to off again so now they're both on the off position and that is it that is the heating and hot water completely switched off when you turn the uh, heating off, I will just mention that the fan will run on for a few minutes or so just to cool itself down again. Um, but once it's cooled down, it will turn itself off properly. OK, um, so there's not a huge amount left to show you. Um, it's only really these bits underneath the uh, settees here and in the bathroom. So under the near side settee, so the passenger side, we've got this, which is your power supply unit. So the power supply unit, basically, again, probably surface planetary, but it takes the tw all the 12 volt power and all the mains power, uh, all goes to here, and then it all gets split off as and where it needs to go to. So if I explain what I mean, we've got all of your 240 volt trip switches at the top with a little symbol telling you what each one does. And all of your 12 volt fuses down at the bottom as well, also with a little symbol telling you what they all do. So, for example, if you get into the vehicle one day, you've got good voltage, but you just cannot get any lights to come on. First thing I would do would be come down here, find your light circuits, which are the first two just there, and just check those two fuses. And the likelihood would be that one of those has gone and you just have to replace it. Easy as that. So that is where your power supply unit is. Anything uh, electrical is coming from there. Under the other side, the off side or the driver's side, we've got a few other bits. So we've got two more gas isolators just here. The one closest to us is the heater and the one towards the back is the water heater. So if you wanted to isolate the gas from either of those, you can do that from there. And then at the back there, you've got the little yellow twisty handle, uh, which is the boiler drain off point. So if you needed to drain the water out from the boiler, so something that you would do in the uh, you know the sort of way up to winter basically you would drain it off from the little yellow handle just there so um these two bits here this is the back of the hookup point and the um leisure battery point there as well that's it really that's all there is under there so if i just show you the bathroom should be the last bit so at the back just here um we've got i mean it's all normally pretty self-explanatory the only bit that i tend to run through is the toilet because you, you know you quite literally just got hot and cold tap for the sink hot and cold tap for the shower and then the toilet it's very simple but if you've not used one of these before then you know you're not to know how to use it so essentially what you've got is a blue button just here which will pump around the flush fluid, assuming that you've got the pump switched on. So let me turn that back on. Pump fluid pumps around. And then you can drain it off into the cassette by pulling this handle like so. So you put it one way, that drains it into the cassette and then pull it back. And that's it. That is how you use the bathroom and the toilet in this particular van. So before setting off, before you start driving off anywhere, make sure it's really important to make sure that all of your glass bits and pieces are down like this. Make sure that all of your windows are shut completely over like this. All skylights are down and locked in position. Uh, and that your gas is switched off really is quite important because you know the last thing you want in, you know, if you did have a crash or an accident, the last thing you want is uh, mains power gas coming through. So um, so that's, that's about the only thing you need to know really for that. Um, but yeah, so that's it. That's, that's about all I can show you, I think. I think I've gone through everything. But otherwise, uh, you know, if there's anything you think I've missed out or anything you want going over again, just let us know. Thanks very much.